Today is Patriot Day, a solemn occasion marking the anniversary of what was, for many Americans, the worst day of their life. Ten years ago today, terrorists launched an attack on the United States and started a war that rages on to this day. I thought about making a video for the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks since for some reason even though this country does not follow the metric system when the number of years it's been since a major event in US history happens to be divisible by 10 the anniversary of that event takes on a special significance so this weekend I've been speaking with a bunch of the, my colleagues asking them to share their recollections of that fateful morning. So Greg, you're actually from New York, mm, and yeah. uh, you were telling me, uh, and, and in, but you lived in Texas on September 11, 2001, and why, why don't you tell me what you remember about that morning, because you had an interesting story. Yeah, it, it, it sort of goes back to um, look, looking through the lens, 2020 lens of, of history, uh, everybody wonders, well, why didn't we know that this was a possibility? Why uh, were all these events that had to happen in order for the tragedy of the towers particularly to happen, why weren't they anticipated and why weren't they prevented? And it was just so far beyond the scope of what anybody was ever thinking was possible. Um, my story illustrates that. Uh, that morning, I was on my way to work. Uh, I remember exactly where I was. And I was on my, my cell phone with a friend of mine who was in New York at the time. And uh, we were talking, just catching up. And uh, she was watching the local news in New York, which broadcast the event before it got onto the national news. And all of a sudden she says to me, oh my gosh, somebody ran a plane into the World Trade Center. And my first thought was, well, is it a cloudy day? You know, or is it fog or something? And nobody thought it was a big plane. Everybody thought, oh my gosh, this is some little commuter you know, turkey with a, or commuter plane or somebody with this little four-seater and, and crashed in the tower. Um, to the point, it was, the thought that this was intentional was so far beyond our conception. We even started joking about it. We are like, well, what kind of an idiot do you have to be? To, I mean, my gosh, are they not big enough? Are they not tall enough? Did you not see it? I mean, what kind of a moron do you have to be? It seems so like an accident. Kind of, it, it seemed like an accident, a really stupid accident. And um, I remember I was turning on from uh, Route 20 to 22 on to Mopac in Austin. And she said, oh, my gosh, another plane just hit the other tower. And that's the instant when we knew. And that's, I think, when the world changed. Yeah. Now, Professor, you were teaching here the morning of September 11th, 2001. You'd... I was. So what did what do you remember about that morning? Were you in class when you got the news? Was it between classes? How did no, you... I remember I was coming into the law school, and I do not remember who the student was, but some student said, do you know that a plane flew into the towers in New York City? And I said, you're kidding. And he says, no, last thing I heard, that was true. So I walked on in and uh, got the old computer up, and sure enough, uh, the first plane had crashed into, into the tower, and it was just unbelievable. And uh, when uh, did you find out about the, the second plane and the, 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 basically the other, the other planes? Well, you know that... TV was then on for the rest of the day, oh. and um, I did not see the second one happen, and I can't even remember if we had that on TV. I think we did. Um, but, um, you know, everybody was just glued to the TV when all that was happening, so it was just unbelievable. Did you have any classes that day that you were teaching? Were classes canceled? Believe it or not, we continued classes. It that was like... Uh, that sounds like Baylor. <laughs> That's well. I mean, there wasn't much we could do about it, and right. you know, things were still developing, and there was still, I think, I can't remember with the one that crashed in Pennsylvania, whether it was still in the air and we knew about it, and mm -hmm. then the Pentagon. Um, but uh, no, we continued to have class that day. Well, I guess it's good to be surrounded by people you love. Well, are forced to love, but. <laughs> But uh, that's at a time like that. Well, now th then that is something I did not know that, that they, uh, they that school uh, stayed in session all day. It did. And, uh, 
but uh, that's our that's our commitment to academia and yes. the rigors of practicing law. Okay, Laura Wren. Uh, Laura, you first. What were you doing on uh, the morning of September 11th when you got the news? When you found out? I was in high school still, and I was in my sophomore ceramics class, and someone from another class came in and told us what had happened. And when I first heard about it, I actually giggled because it seemed so absurd to me that something like that would have happened. And then in our next class, it was world history, so we actually turned on the TV and got to see what was happening, and um, then it kind of sank in what really happened. I also had a cousin and his wife who were in the Pentagon um, on the same day, um, and his wife suffered a concussion, but otherwise they were fine, so it was lucky. Moving. Now, right. now, one of the things that Baylor is known for, uh, th that it's probably best known for, is practice court, which is a program that all three L's have to take, and I'm not even going to begin to describe how difficult and intense it is. And Professor Powell here has been uh, teaching PC for, when did you start teaching PC? I taught, uh, first taught in the practice court program uh, in about 1986, uh, I was working at that time with uh, Professor Muldrow, and uh, after Professor Muldrow retired, I worked with Professor uh, Underwood, uh, and at the, at the time of 9-11, he and I were, uh, were teaching the practice court program. And that's Bill Underwood, who that's was the correct. interim president that's, here. That's correct. So you were uh, teaching that morning, uh, September 11th, 2001, and um, you know, wh why don't you, you tell me uh, what you remember, what sticks out about that morning? Well, I remember <clears throat> being at home. I remember uh, walking uh, through my den on my way to school. Uh, the television was on, the news was on. Uh, and the image I saw was one of the towers, uh, and smoke was billowing out of it. Uh, and uh, and I learned then that a plane had crashed into the tower, and I watched it uh, uh, for a bit, uh, and then uh, got in my car and drove to school, uh, and continued to listen on the radio as I came to school. So by the time you, uh, let's see, you were telling me practice court at that time started at 9.15, and typically how long did it, did it go? Uh, in, in 2001, practice, th this class, this was actually the evidence class, um, it would have uh, been an hour and five minutes. Okay, so, all right, so, uh, but by the time you, uh, uh, got to school obviously and started teaching you knew uh, that it, it was an attack because yes. when a lot of people I guess one plane they most people first thought it was an accident but I just can't imagine you know how you go on uh, with the routine at, 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 as normal on uh, after finding out news like that but I guess well I don't think it was normal um, uh, I went into the class uh, uh, I think everyone at that point knew what had happened. Uh, they expected the class to proceed, I suppose. Uh, I told them immediately that if anyone needed to leave, uh, that they were free to do that, that if anyone needed to make a phone call and check on a loved one or something, then uh, then they were free to go and do that, and and some did. You know, some of them uh, came back, others didn't. Uh, and um, uh, after we had done that, uh, I recall I spoke with the class a little bit about what had happened. Didn't didn't know exactly what what had happened, but it seemed to be obvious that it was a terrorist attack. Um, I told the class uh, that we were going to proceed with the class that day because I felt like it was important to do that. 
I felt like it was important that the uh, the terrorists not dictate our lives, that they not affect us. Uh, and I told them that I believed what we were doing was important, uh, training them to be lawyers. I told them that I believed there would be a need for lawyers in a in a world uh, after an incident like this. Uh, I told them that I could foresee the need for able prosecutors to bring justice to those who had caused it. I told them that I thought there would be the need for lawyers to represent uh, particularly Muslim Americans uh, who who might be innocent victims of uh, some kind of a backlash from something like this. And uh, because I felt like going on with our lives and not letting the terrorists dictate what we do because I felt that was important and I felt that teaching people to be lawyers and do those important jobs uh, was uh, just something that we should do. We proceeded with class and uh, those who wanted to and were able to stayed and, uh, and we did our jobs together that day. Okay, so how old were you uh, on September 11th today? I was a freshman in high school. Okay, same as me. So what uh, what do you remember about that morning? Um, I went to school and I remember I was in my U.S. history class and we had just started class when um, somebody came in and told us to turn on the TV. So we turned it on and um, we actually saw the second plane hit and it was pretty surreal. And then I went to biology, and basically there was no class going on that day. We were just watching what was happening. Um, at that time, we had a bomb threat called into our high school, and so they evacuated us. And that was right after they called the no-fly order, and a plane flew over the, the parking lot. So everybody kind of freaked out and ran home. This was in Colorado Springs? Yeah. All right. Well... Very, very interesting. Thank you both. I'd like to close this video out by thanking the heroes of 9-11. Obviously, uh, we don't have time to thank them all individually, but of course, we want to remember uh, the enormous courage and sacrifice of the first responders in both New York and Washington, D.C., fire, police, EMTs, paramedics, as well as the um, heroic crew and passengers of United Flight 93 who were able to overpower the terrorist hijackers and uh, avert what surely would have been uh, another devastating attack. The clergy who comforted people in the immediate aftermath of September 11th, and some of whom actually died on that morning. And, of course, uh, all the brave men and women who have served overseas defending our homeland against uh, terrorists, and, and those who have served right here at home, especially in the intelligence communities, keeping us safe, and who have uh, averted many uh, would have been uh, terrorist attacks. Um, let's see. Oh, finally, uh, there is some footage that did not make it into uh, this video, and you can watch the outtakes reel on my website. So go there. And um, as for those of you uh, who are suffering today because it brings back painful memories. I just want to say that, uh, you know what, I, I, I'm not very good at this. Uh, uh, John Scott, help me out here. We will always remember the evil unleashed upon us. But let us never forget the good, the selflessness, the kindness, the heroism, openly displayed by thousands of people demonstrating that the land of the free is truly the home of the brave. Well said, John, well said. 
Thank you all for watching. Good night, and God bless America.